take a look at some of these cords. The first cord we're going to talk about is a 10 foot long cord and this cord has 1 8 inch on one end, it's a male, and it has 1 quarter inch male on the other side. There's two lines on each of these which means that this is a stereo cord. They make this cord both in mono and stereo versions and I'm recommending the stereo version of the cord and the two lines on the ends are what signifies the stereo. What we're going to do is just go ahead and plug in an audio source. Right now we're going to plug in an iPod which of course the eighth inch plugs right into and the quarter inch cord we're going to plug right into the side of the MA101. There's a hole right here that accepts a quarter inch. We're going to slide that right in there. And what's nice about the MA101 is there's two control knobs. The top control knob is the power knob, which we're going to turn on now that the audio is plugged in. We're going to turn it up just a little bit. The second knob controls the audio for the input audio source. So we're going to go ahead and press play on this iPod. The bottom knob is controlling the volume. I'll put this on pause and when you connect and disconnect an audio source you want to turn off the PA or the speaker before you uh, connect or disconnect any audio sources. Uh, the second audio source we're going to talk about is a laptop computer. I'm going to set the iPod off to the side here and bring the laptop up here into view. A lot of uh, presentations that I do involve a uh, PowerPoint and um, if you take a look right here on the side of the laptop there's a couple of holes right here. Both of these are eighth inch holes. The first one is a black one and it's got a little picture of a headphones and that means that's the output and then the second one has a little picture of a microphone and that's the input. We're going to use the output, the one with the headphones, and we're going to plug the eighth inch in right to there. And in the same way that we ran the music from the iPod into the MA101, we're going to do the same thing and use the laptop. Turn this. And once again, we're using the lower knob to control the volume. The volume's coming straight out of the headphone port of the laptop in to the quarter inch right here on the MA101 and the bottom control knob controls the volume for that. The second thing we're going to do is take a look at one of these microphones and how they synchronize to the MA101. What's really nice about my pro system is the ACT functionality and what I mean by that is it automatically synchronizes the handheld microphone or the body pack. We're going to take a look on the side of the MA101 right here and there's two buttons. The first button says ACT and the second button says scan. The only one that we care about is the first button here. This is the ACT button which synchronizes this microphone. Right here on the side of the microphone there's a small red patch. All, the only thing we need to do to synchronize it is make sure that this red dot, little plastic red dot, is pointed towards the MA101 and we're going to press the ACT button. We let it go and in just a minute of course, the power must be turned on for the microphone. Turn the power on, press the ACT button, and in just a couple of seconds, test, test, test. We're going to use the top control knob to control the volume of our voice. And uh, just in the same way that we synchronized the handheld, we're going to turn that one off. The body pack has the same red patch right here. It's a little red plastic piece and that's the ACT receiver. So we're going to turn that towards the MA101 
we're going to do the same thing and press the ACT button oh there we go uh, just as on the other one we got to make sure the power is turned on first turn the power on to the body pack then we'll press the ACT button it takes just a couple of seconds this light will turn green letting us know testing test testing test and it's just that fast and that simple press the ACT button and it automatically synchronizes your microphones we're going to turn this one off we're going to set the MA 101 off to the side Now we're going to talk about the Roadshow box. This Roadshow box is built to the exact specifications of a speaker mentor, speaker trainer, Joel Bauer. We'll take a look at the front panel. On the top, there's a four channel mixer, and on the bottom, it has the microphone receivers. Some of them are built with two, and some of them are built with four. We're also going to take a look. at the back side of the Roadshow box. And what's really nice about this design is there's only two cords. One cord is the power cord. Many of you are familiar with that one. This one here is the XLR cord. This is the three prong cord which is the most common pro audio cord and the one that we're going to be using today. I'm just going to turn this back around. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can come back here with me and we're going to take a look at how this gets hooked up exactly. The first thing we're going to do is hook up our XLR cord. This is the XLR cord male and the female end. This is the male end coming out of the back of the box and it only plugs into the female end of the XLR cord. Once that's snapped into position, the other end of the cord, the male end of the cord, is the one that gets plugged into either the wall at your uh, uh, speaking event. If they have audio built into your uh, hotel room or wherever it is that you're speaking, you can go ahead and plug directly into the XLR port on the wall, the one we talked about a little bit earlier. Or if you're using your own equipment, right here on the back of the speaker, we're going to go ahead and plug this XLR cord right here into the microphone in just like that 